I think we all know the impact he's not just that he had on the game of basketball, but that he had on the world as a whole, and uh, he'll be missed. Um, on to the Trailblazers. Um, very pleased with how the offseason went. Um, uh, pretty, pretty quick and smooth compared to the summer before. You know, we basically got all of our big transactions done on draft day, getting Danny Avdia in the early afternoon and then drafting Donovan Klingon later that evening. So two players that we think are going to make a, a big impact on this, this team, not just in the short term, but in the very long term. Um, also really, really pleased with the work that our guys got done this season, this off season. Um, we, you know, try to try to get them together as much as possible, try to get a lot of five on five action going, just trying to do as much, you know, developing and bonding and gelling as we could. And um, we've had a really productive four or five months here. So, you know, we'll get into, I'm sure, the status of some of the guys, injury status and those kind of things. But um, overall, I thought it was a really, really productive off season development wise for our guys. Um, you know, we're, we have a roster that, that we really like. We're happy where, we're where we are right now, but we love where we are headed. You know, but to do that, we've got to take steps. We have a lot of talent on this roster, but a lot of it's untapped potential. There are, you know, numerous young guys who have multiple steps they still need to take. We have a lot of veterans, if not all of them, who have at least one, maybe two more good steps in them. And our challenge this season and in the in the short term overall is to keep developing and get these guys as good as possible. Um, we've been working hard, you know, throughout our time here to establish a mentality of connectivity, competitiveness, grit, you know, high character, and we're going to continue to build on that. You know, we know this season um, it's going to have its ups and downs. You know, we, we like who we are, but we also know we're not ready to win at a high level yet. And we want to continue to build that foundation of prepping us for the long term so that we can have sustainable success. Um, ready for questions? Joe, last year you guys set out to develop, but injuries kind of derailed a lot of your plans. But what would the season look like this year? What does it need to look like for you to consider it a success, especially when the expectations, expectations sorry, are so low for you guys? Yeah. I think one thing we're really hoping to find this year throughout this season and definitely by the end of it is more clarity. And to your point, Aaron, last year, I don't know how much clarity we walked away with. We, you know, we saw, you know, flashes and capabilities, but we didn't see sustained production or sustained cohesion. And I think this year we need to build on that and we need to have a better feel and understanding of what we are, what moves we need to make, what additions we need to have what's going really well. Like we need just more focus on what our long-term outlook is gonna look like. You've been pretty candid about this being the early stages of a rebuild when you've talked to us recently. Where are you guys? Like what, you chose continuity over maybe some bigger changes this summer. Where are you, would you say, in that rebuild process? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say we're still in the, the earlier stages. Um, just because there's still so much left to prove with this group, you know, like, and a lot of that's based on what your young guys are capable of and when they're going to be ready. You know, we've heavily invested draft pick wise, you know, the last three drafts with Shaden, Scoot, and now Donovan. Um, until those guys take like steps and start like playing winning basketball, um, we're still, we're not going to win at the level we need to. So, Part of it's up to them, like when will you guys be ready? When will you take these next steps? And when can you really impact the game instead of just showing flashes or you know, having a good five game run? Uh, on that same note, why did you value continuity this summer? What, you know, 13 guys back yeah. and Justin Minaya, why was that the, the aim? Yeah, I think it's something you, the word connectivity you hear from us a lot and it's something we believe in and value, it's that you know, as a group, like in order to be your best, you need to be connected and you need to be on the same page and you need to gel. And part of our goal, you know, this off season and something we were happy about was there wasn't too much turnover. You know, we have two key additions and of course you gotta get used to those new guys, but we like that we have, you know, at least a year with this current group. I think we saw it last year when we made all those trades that 
early in the season we were really disjointed. I like the fact that we won't be this as disjointed this year. Um, but at the same time, we're not at a place in our roster where we can be content or comfortable with what we have. I mean, we challenge ourselves to be active. We challenge ourselves to look continually, continually look for ways to improve. So we're trying to balance that a little bit. It's yes, we value the connectivity and the cohesion and the veteran leadership, but we also need to figure out where are we headed long term. So just trying to balance that a little bit. Chauncey enters the final guaranteed year of his deal. How will you evaluate him when losing is pretty much expected? What does he mm -hmm. need to do to prove to you that he deserves an extension? And will he be allowed to coach the team however he wants to to pursue as many wins as possible, even though maybe losing is in the cards? Mm -hmm. Start with the second question first. Um, Chauncey and I have a great relationship where, you know, we, we talk a lot. We spend a lot of time together. Um, he values my input but I also value his expertise. And I don't meddle in you know, the day-to-day -day or the game-to-game -game or even month-to-month -month stuff with Chauncey. You know, I'm always there for him if he needs me, but I trust him and his decisions. And you know, as far as style of play, rotations, um, how to open or close games, that, that's up to Chauncey. And if he, if he needs any input, I'm there for him, but I'm gonna let him do that. As far as how this year is gonna go, um, it's a, we're ch it's a challenge for all of us, you know, for Chauncey, for our players, for me. We all need to take steps. You know, last year for us, it was just so vague the way the season went and ended. Um, there's just not much we can point to, you know, as far as like saying, hey, this is what we are. And there's not much we can take away from because we know that all these circumstances led to us, you know, not being very productive. So. For this year, our challenge, my challenge for Chauncey, my challenge for myself and for our guys, take steps. If we're taking steps and we get that clarity I was talking about and become very conscious of what we are and where we're headed, I think that's going to be a successful year. Uh, Joe, you guys didn't really do too much as far as changes after the stuff you did on draft night. How close did you get to any bigger changes mm -hmm. later on in the summer with any kind of the other guys on the roster? Mm -hmm. Like I said, we always try to be active or definitely more active than most. So, you know, we're, we're constantly talking to teams and kicking ideas around and, you know, looking for ways to get better. I mean, you hear from me, I think a lot, you know, we're not good enough yet. We need to get better. So... You know, there were, all, there were plenty of conversations, none that just became ultra substantive that um, got too close to getting done. So, you know, we'll go into this season with that same mentality that, you know, we don't, we have the luxury where we can be patient and we can um, wait for the right deals. But at the same time, we don't have, you know, a sense of contentment with us. We want to keep getting better and we want to go find other guys like Denny and Donovan and all these other additions that we've made over time. Joe, when you look at a season like this, how do you evaluate wins and losses? What are, not even on the, in the record book, but yeah. what's, what's a successful season look like? What, mm -hmm. does, what are the marks, what are the kind of the measuring sticks that you look for in a season like this? Yeah. Heavily focused on development, not just individual development, player to player, but team development. You know, I think obviously in this league, you gotta have really good players in order to win at a high level. So, you know, how are we, developing our guys to get to those levels, you know, but at the same time, how is our team developing? How are we developing, you know, as a unit style of play? What are we establishing? What are we leaning on? What is our identity in that regard? So as we, as we look at this team and, you know, gauge how we're doing from month to month, we're going to be looking at that. Like what steps are we taking to move forward? Kind of on that vein, uh what have your conversations been like with Scoot and Shaden specifically? What are your expectations for them? And what does a successful season for both of them look like? Yep. Um, we have high expectations for both. You know, we believe in both guys, um, both extremely talented, um, both still very young. So it's trying to, you know, temper our expectations a little bit. Like, we know that even from both of them in their first, Shaden's first two years and Scoot's first year, we saw some high-end moments. How can we create more of those? How do we create consistency out of those? So, you know, it's challenging them to, you know, to be better on a nightly basis, to 
plug holes in their games, to work on their deficiencies, to um, to not just have uh, an occasional highlight, but to provide substantive winning play, you know, on both sides of the ball. So just a lot of conversations about um, how they can get better in the short term and where their get game is headed towards in the long term. And, you know, and a lot of feedback too, you know, what do you need from us? Like coaching wise, strength and conditioning wise, you know, how can we maximize you, you know, in all aspects of your game, you know, and off the court as well, working on that kind of stuff. So. You mentioned uh, the luxury of patience. Mm -hmm. What is the timeline on patience? How long can you go from sort of this, we're trying to build something into seeing substantive progress? Yeah. We would love to win as quickly as possible. I think, I mean, who wouldn't in this league, right? But we're committed to doing it the right way. We don't want to skip major steps in order to lower our ceiling. So I think that's our discipline is, you know, how committed to this rebuild can we be from a year-to-year -year basis, knowing that if we skip steps, we're likely not going to be quite as high level as we need to be and trying to, you know, again, balance that out. So I think it's, it's something that, you know, isn't necessarily always easy to go through, but the more patient we can be, the more intentional we can be, I think we continue to raise our ceiling by doing so. Now... That said, I mean, this is this is hard for us sometimes. Like winning 20 games like we did last year was not easy. Nobody enjoyed that. Nobody looks forward to that. Like we want to start taking steps, um, but we're also going to be smart about it. You've got some veterans that are maybe not quite on the timeline of Shaden and, and, and Scoot. What, are the, what is the likelihood that you might have a, a moves with some of those players, mm -hmm. say, at midseason? Mm -hmm. Time will tell. Um, I want to just hit the ground running with these guys this year, you know, so we'll see how things go throughout the season and trade deadlines quite a ways away. Um, but we're always going to be open minded, you know, like we're going to look at it deal by deal and evaluate these one at a time and decide if that's a good move for us or not. You know, we have we have a plan. We know what we'd like our end result to be. Um, sometimes we don't control that, but it's just staying open minded and nimble and um, just seeking out what's best for this team, you know, not just in the short term, but the long term. Uh, Joe, is everybody good health-wise going into camp? Is everybody a full go? And specifically, how's Rob doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody um, is essentially good to go. The update on Rob is um, he's doing really well. He started playing five-on-five five with us last three or so weeks. Um, not fully, fully cleared yet as far as like without any restrictions or limitations, but um, definitely has been um, really active on the court and will be, you know, his participation level and practices will continue to ramp up. You know, we'll start tomorrow and maybe we'll hold him out of a few things here and there, but um, he's, uh, he's making really good progress. Um, otherwise, the roster is looking good health-wise. Um, few guys with that are beat up a little bit but nothing bad and um as far as i know everybody's a go for tomorrow for practice thank you joe mm -hmm. appreciate it thanks everyone